Hi, and welcome to the Frog Pond School of Design, where we talk about things, a wide variety of things that all seem to have some connection to architecture. I want to start today with, uh, with an apology. I try to keep these little clips from three to five minutes in length, but today's going to be longer, and it's, I'm sorry, it's just the nature of the beast, so we'll dig right in. First, I want to mention a book called A Pattern Language. Now, this, is, this book came out in 1977. It was put together by a guy named Christopher Alexander and a group of people uh, working with him. It immediately became kind of a cult uh, thing between, uh, you know, among design-oriented people, and it's still popular today. But it has like 250-some uh, chapters that they each call a pattern. Um, and well, I want to talk about one of them today because I think it's it's a good example of how the book works and might pique your interest in the book itself. Uh, the one I want to talk about is called um, The Entrance Transition. Now that's important for a lot of reasons. For one thing, the entrance to your home, your business, whatever your property is, is everyone's first impression of you and your space. So you want it to work well. But the other thing about the entrance, um, architects tend to call this the entrance progression, but he calls it the transition and for good reason because what he's talking about is the fact that people have behaviors for wherever they happen to be and you want everyone's behavior to be appropriate for the location. Example, you're driving down, you've all had this experience, you're driving down the highway at 70 miles an hour or whatever, you come to your exit, you zip off, you're dumped onto a more local street, and suddenly you realize you're still going 60 or so miles an hour. Hopefully you catch that before you get pulled over, but what happened? You, you missed a cue somewhere along the line <laughs> that your behavior should be changing. So we want to make sure as people migrate from, you know, outside to inside or whatever, that they get these cues and that their behavior adjusts itself accordingly. Um, in the book, they tell about some researchers who were observing behaviors at a uh, an exhibit pavilion. Um, huge space with all these folks in there with their booths that you could enter and, and see what they had to offer. Um, and, and it was distressing to them because people just kind of zipped into a booth and in one end and out the other end and never really stopped to engage very often with, with what was going on inside, with the exception of one booth. And they kept watching that and they thought the stuff inside the booth is no better than any of the others. What's the difference here? Well, they finally decided that, the, that what was making the difference was the fact that as um, someone entered that booth, he or she had to walk across a length of, are you ready for this? Bright orange shag carpet. Picture my living room in 1974, okay? That's what this was like, and somehow that element as you entered the, the the booth got people to slow down and engage more in there with with the displays and whatever than the other booths in general so there there's you you have to create these cues and find some way of, uh, of, of telling people you're changing your environment you need to change your behavior and what kind of things can do this well Alexander talks about uh, things like a, your walking sur a change in your walking surface, an elevation, maybe you go up or down steps, you change directions, you change your view. In fact, he's, he's very big on the combination of a change of view and change of direction. And uh, I had read this and was having a little difficulty visualizing what that really meant. And, Coincidentally, uh, within days after reading that, I was watching a video where a man was walking down a, a little drive in like a seaside village because there were cottages and picket fences and all this around. And straight in front of him, 
he had a wonderful view of the ocean. But when he reached his destination, he left that view behind, he turned 90 degrees, went through a gate, a little garden, and up to the, the cottage that he was going to. And I thought, you know, that, that really was effective. He, he really had to make a mental shift at that point where he left that view behind and changed directions. So what other things could be helpful? You know, a porch, uh, think of Cracker Barrel, okay? You know, they've perfected the front porch. Um, the only thing I would do differently is I wouldn't bring the sidewalk straight into the door. You know, I'd bring sidewalk someplace else, so they have to trans traverse a little bit of that porch before they reach the door. But anyway, a garden, a gate, uh, an arbor, uh, some, a patio with some seating. There, there used to be, they used to have a term called the door yard, where old homes, especially out in the country, uh, would would fence in an area just outside the entrance to the house so you actually had to make an entrance into this little space. Um, here's an example, a gate not too far from the, the door of the house and you can see where this would slow you down, give you a sense of changing your environment and moving on toward that door. Now I found a lot of photos like this but the problem is they were all looking directly at the door so you don't get the idea of the change of, of direction, which reminds me of someone I want to show you, which in my mind is the bad example. Here's a beautiful home and a lot of space. Uh, they've got this, this courtyard out front, but from the very beginning, you're looking straight at the door. You know, there's no change of direction. You, you focus in on that door and you miss everything else around you. You can, you can picture yourself still in your car, zipping up that drive, going straight at that door and and in and never getting the cues that you need to, to change your environment. Uh, okay, arbor trellis I mentioned, a foyer. This transition can even happen inside the house. You know, the, most people talk about it happening somewhere between the street and the door. You know, it can happen actually a little bit before the street if, if you're turning into a cul-de-sac or something. Or it can happen inside the door with, with a nice foyer, a place where you have to stop and, and assess. But don't overlook other elements like lighting and sound and even smell. You know, if the lighting changes, um, if the quality of the sound around you changes or music is introduced or maybe you're burning incense or you know, you've all had the experience of walking into a house and smelling fresh baked bread or something, uh, you know, in the kitchen. So, um, you know, a lot of things can play into this, but you just have to keep them in mind when you, when you put your space together. I'll show you one more example, a personal example, okay? Um, this is my back porch. Now, it's pretty typical. Uh, most people would call this a deck with a class with a typical railing. Uh, you do have to, you know, there's a some uh, gravel walkway out here that transitions to concrete. You go up a couple steps. You've got a view here of this huge uh, evergreen tree straight ahead of you. But then you change directions and you turn and you go in the door and you think. Well, that's, that's pretty good. You know, there are a lot of things going on there, a lot of cues, but I kept thinking, you know, what, what, can, what more can we do here? How could this be even better? And I thought maybe, maybe adding a sense of, a greater sense of enclosure to the, to the porch itself would help. So I did this. I fattened up those, uh, those posts so that they would be better in proportion, took them up and put this entablature around the top and it really has created uh, a sense of space on that patio. So again, you have, ca you have cause for pause before you turn and, and enter into the house itself. So this is just some examples of, of the things that can be done to enhance the, the sense of entry as you approach and, and enter a property of any kind, whether it's your home, your business, um, uh, retail store, anything uh, that, that you have that you, you really want people to engage in when they, when they approach. So that's the story from uh, uh, 
from Christopher Alexander <laughs> at Pattern Language Today and from the Frog Pond School of Design. Thanks for joining us and I hope to see you hanging around the pond again real soon.